Yo, what up? It's your boy TW Solo. And tonight we're going to be talking about the frequency slope on the dry rack. I got a couple of people give me comments about it and they uh, they want to know what is the LR24 or BW24 represents underneath the slope. Now, before I get down to details about what the slope does in the middle, is first you got to know what speakers you purchase beside this dry rack is telling you the preset of what speakers you already had or if you don't have you will go to customize and then you will follow instruction wherever the dry rack gets you but for now let's just say if you were to purchase a speaker at guitar center or any other site or any other place and normally when people purchase it it will have all sorts of details like you know how many watches and the frequencies and all that and how heavy it is but what you really want to play attention to most besides watches is frequency. So for me to explain to you what this does in the middle, first let's just say you were to get on the internet and this is a EV LXX 112 right here. Zoom up close. Let's just say if you want to purchase this one. You know, here's the price, here's the speaker. And if you were to look down, it's got pictures of it. If it come up, let me see. It's loading right now. If it looks like that, let's say if you heard about it, and if you were to went to the actual store and you heard this speaker playing, you know you're happy with it, you're comfortable with it, and you want to pair it down. And uh, normally, uh, this would give you a lot of information. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to tell you real quick. Now, get closer. Here's the description. And it will give you all sorts of information about the speaker if you wanted to purchase. Now, if you look at the feature, this is where it gets crazy. You know, it will tell you what it's designed for and all that. And what you really want to look for besides the size of the woofer and how many watches. And here's the frequency right here. Right here it says from 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz, right? And it will tell you the sound pressure level and so forth. So here's the frequency, 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, now, since it says 50, you go in here. Let's just say you bought your speaker home and you finally bought them. Now, make sure when you hit setup, or hit the next page button that out is selected so now I'm on the out here's my BW6 and I'm gonna explain why and here's the volume the total volume for the mains now now the information about the EL well EV I should say I said it wrong EV it says from 50 Hertz all the way to actually, yeah 20 Okay, here we go. So from 50 hertz, you will select out for your main and make sure your error is on out. And then when you turn the data wheel to the right, it starts from the lowest frequency. But it says 50. So you will turn it all the way to 50. You leave it right there for your main. And, um, and then I'm going to explain to you what the BW6 explains. Now, once you press down the data wheel, it will take you to this. Now, this is the lowest setting for the BW. And if you look over here, just watch the slope as I turn this. So if I turn this to 12, you notice that the slope got sharper. Turn it again, it gets even sharper. Turn it again, then it gets a lot sharper. You see how it moves? So any given frequency that you select to say 50, if this is all the way to 24, it will stop at 50 hertz. Then your subwoofer is going to have to pick up a little bit above 50 hertz and carry it down to get a smooth spectrum. Now if you select the lowest setting on the BW, it will start from 50 hertz down. So you're not just going to hear 50 hertz, you're going to hear, you're going to hear, uh, hear, oh I can't say it tonight, you're going to hear a little bit of maybe 40 some hertz 
below uh, 50 hertz that you selected I should say so the lotus setting for that watch see that And there you go I don't know why they put the LR I'm gonna have to look that up but it gives you a, uh, a sharper slope like I said when you select 50 Hertz and you select it all the way 24 it stops at 50 Hertz no more than 50 Hertz no more below 50 Hertz but if you use it last it's gonna go a little bit below 50 Hertz whatever your power speakers or speaker recommended to use if you're using dry rack so you can get the right frequencies to your tops now let's go on to the sub same purpose the next page button now you on the sub now if you look at the solid line and the selected slub it's all the way across now same thing I'm already on out and like I said on my other videos let's just say my sub is all the way down to 20 Hertz if I hit the next page button I get the other end of the subwoofer slope then I turn it to the left and as you look over here it goes from kilohertz all the way to hertz and let's just say you sub recommend 20 hertz all the way to most of them would say the highest would go it's 150 I know that's ridiculous I've seen subwoofer that can go up to 150 hertz so if you hit the next page button hit it again so you can get back to your sub menu now if you look at the slope on this side right here press down the data wheel and you turn your BW option and watch the slope look at that so if it's all if, if it's recommended all the way to 20 Hertz I would have this at the higher setting I wanted to stop at 20 Hertz now for the other end you just hit the next page button you get the other end of the slope right here and it says up to 150 same thing you press down the data wheel and you look at your BW or LR which I'm gonna look that up and look at the slope so the last number the smoother it will pick off from that frequency where the where the mains cannot pick up at and the subwoofer will pick up smoothly from that frequencies down to 20 Hertz but if you turn it the numbers up a little bit more it gets steeper and steeper and steeper which means the steeper it gets it will start at 150 down to 20 that you selected so this is how you use the BW setup actually it is a setup but that's a BW and LR I don't know why they had LR in there I just think it's the same purpose I don't really see nothing different or make it sound different it's just it's just you know it's doing what it's supposed to do so that's how you use it so there you go that's how it's, that's how you use a slope on your dry rack for any given speaker that you purchase or that you had that you familiar with the frequency you select the right frequency and from there you know watch my other videos about using pink noise and how to set your limiters and all that other stuff and you just carry on and that's how you do it so that's how you use a slope on a dry rack on selected speakers now so there you go kind of gives you an idea of what you purchase and what your speakers are, are capable of ha handling frequency especially if you're going to add dry rack into the family and in the system this is a must have other DJs might not agree with it I can understand because they they know their shit I know I know my shit as well but the problem is if I don't have this like if I don't have this dry rack like I know how to watch my levels not only my setup over there but then I got to keep looking at all four of them like I got to constantly look at them and people just think something is wrong with me. They thought I was hallucinating up in the sky. They thought I was high or whatever. I said, no, I don't do none of that. It's just that I don't want to blow my speakers. I blow it once. If you see my OOO videos that one of my JBLs went out, it's because of that. But ever since I got the dry rack, I haven't been replacing them lately. So that's good. So um, these four speakers are powered. Each of them got clip lights in there. And I'm just 
I don't want to always keep looking at them. I mean, I will look at them, but I don't want to look at them all the time doing the performance. I want to be sure that when I have this unit right here, that my speakers are safe. No matter how hard I push these EQs and the master, even if I push this, I can never go over because like I said, any given time you apply a limiter to any signal, a limiter ain't nothing but a brick wall. You can't go through. Cause all, cause if you really, if you really trying to beat the limiter, and it's doing its job, and, and, and especially you do whatever you can to really, really, really push it, you really gonna destroy the signal, pretty much. You just gonna destroy the signal. You can't really beat the limiter that's applied to it because I can turn this up all day long with the limiter set right. My speaker's still gonna sound clean. I just can't go over it. It. A limiter ain't nothing but a lifesaver when it comes to audio equipment. Let's just put it that way. I can go crazy high every knob turned up, but not the speakers. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't cheat yourself by turning the speakers up because the limiter is already active on the dry rack. Because you got to remember that signal coming out. Well, actually, the the dry rack is send, sending the signal out to the speakers. So you can push these hard. Just as long as the limiter on the dry rack is set right. And you can go crazy all you want. Go crazy. Do whatever you want. But don't ever, ever do it to your speaker. Because your speaker depended on the amplifier that's built in with itself. So even if the limiter is active on there. All it's doing is sending the signal out to the speaker. So there's no limiters between these lines right here. That's from the dry rack. It goes all the way to four of my speaker. These two here and these two here. So if you're trying to cheat yourself like, oh, well, he said it. Well, he got the limiter turned on on the dry rack. So I'm going to turn all these four speakers up. Don't do that because your speaker relies on the amplifiers itself. Unless they got a limiter built inside these internal amplifiers. So don't do that. You're going to blow it. You're just asking for it. Just be smart and be reasonable with what you're using. You know. It's best to be safe on that side. Let the dry rack do its job. And let the speakers, you know, take over the signal that the dry rack sends out. And leave these four speakers at a reasonable volume. Don't try to cheat yourself or think because the limiter is turned on on there. It doesn't mean you can turn all these knobs up on there and expect it to be safe. Because you're still going to blow them. Because the volume on these speakers themselves depending on it and you you you're just you're just gonna blow them if you know the lights are there for a reason you know if the speakers are you know if they got limiters built into it it will tell you you got an option to do it but then you know but still though don't ever take advantage of turning these knobs all the way up and try to cheat yourself out of not buying a dry rack or any other sound process to save your speaker because there's people who try to do that just buy this, be smart about it, and, and save yourself some time, some money. It, it doesn't hurt to, uh, to buy one. I know they're very expensive. I saw one that goes for $400. I got this for $200. So, yeah, but it doesn't hurt to get it. Because let me tell you, with this here, you save a lot of money from repairing these four. I repaired this speaker over there twice. I don't know what it is about that speaker, man, but I repair that twice. I was watching my lights and everything, but somehow I still push it too hard. But with the dry rack, I have it for a while. Have them blow it since then. It sounds cleaner because it's flexible. I can change the EQ and the sounds and EQs and all that on there. This is a lifesaver when it comes to audio equipment. So some of y'all might not agree, but if you would have went to the professional club or if you went to the concert, you, they will have massive of dry racks. They, they probably have one of them, uh, one of the top dolls type dry rack. It might not look like mine, um, like mine, but it will look something like this. But it will take about maybe two rack space. I think it's a 4800 dry rack, 4800 or whatever they had. It's this big. It's this wide. It's a 19 inch rack, but it's this wide, and it will have hell of meters, and professionals, concerts, uh, clubs. They, they use them. Go look around. Go to the club and ask them about it. They, they use something like this or bigger. 
and you will see why they will play live music all night long and never blow them. You know, because it used to caught my ears when I used to go to St. Louis or any other cities. And I was like, damn, I was like, they could push them so hard all night long. And then, you know, I know what amps they were using. They was using one of them old school crown amps, which you don't never see them no more. I would like to get one of them personally, though, just to have them. But anyway, uh, all I'm saying is this is how you use your slope for any given speaker you selected so you can select the right frequency. And like I said, just play around with it. Get the feel of it. Don't cheat yourself of trying to turn all your speakers up over there just because you got this limiter activated. You got to remember, it can only do what it can. And if you try to cheat yourself, turn it all the way up and think it's going to save it, you're going to blow it. So just try to understand it. Stay away from the red lights on these speakers. You can have them flash, but let the limiter on this unit take over. So any EQ, EQ whatever you apply to on there, or if you apply to on there, you won't hurt it. Now, some power speakers got EQs built into it, like them JBLs does, but I keep them flat at a 12 o'clock like this. I keep them flat on both of these. So, if I wanted it to leave my EQs alone on this and that, I can add a little bass and triple on these tops right here, which I never do because they loud enough and they very efficient. I barely had to turn up, especially doing the gig. So, so yeah, I'm sorry about the long video. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the best I can to help everybody because I'm getting questioned all the time, which I don't mind. Feel free, you know, feel free to comment below from my video. Let me know what you learned and what you, what do you want to know, and I will make another video and and let you know uh, how to use it. So I hope this video is very helpful when it comes to sloping and selecting speakers, and whether if you purchase online or if you happen to go to your music store nearby your town or city, uh, you know, just look at the manual, get to know what you purchase and, and what what's going to do for you. I think that's what most people fail to do, is that people get stuff and they don't ever look in the manual. You you have to look at it, get to know your equipment, you know. But for me, uh. You know, it really didn't took me this long to uh, understand this dry rack. I bought, it, it was used. I bought this, it was just a display. No one touched it, no one messed with it. That's why I got it for cheap. I could have paid twice as much out of the box when I can get it used and no one just touches it, it's just displaying it. And it works extremely great. I love it. And um, it came with a microphone. It came with the cord and it, and it came with two XLR cords. Now, uh, the only thing it didn't come with is the box and it didn't come with a manual. So it took me quite a while to uh, to get used to using this system without the manual at all. I could have went to Google it and do it manual, which that's what I did. But I mean, I can relate to what a limiter and sub harmonics and EQ does. I can relate to it because I make music in my studio. It's the same purpose. So I can relate to whatever I'm looking at. Okay, I know what it does. I know what it need to do. What it work for me? What it not work for me? I'm I'm on point. I you know I'm just that good at it. It's in my blood. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna cut this video short. I know I'm talking too much, and it's early in the morning. It's almost three in the morning. But I just want to let y'all know what the slope does. So if you got any more questions about the dry rack, about you know, anything, meters, dry rack, speakers, software, subwoofer, main, just let me know what's up and I'll be glad to help you out. So uh, thank you for watching. Y'all have a good day. Talk to you later.